Mama, is God real? Is marriage for life? Do we have to be baptized? Is drinking really wrong? Well, that's your interpretation. Where do I come from? Do we really have to have authority for what we do? Where is God when I need him? Rise up, O men of God. His kingdom tarries long. Bring him the day of brotherhood and in the night of wrong. Hello, friends, and welcome again to the Shield of Faith. My name is Wes Garland, and I preach for the Northwest Church of Christ in Clay County, Tennessee, and alongside with us, as always, we have Scott Gant. Hey, Wes. He is a preacher of the Philippi Church of Christ in Tompkinsville, Kentucky. We also have with us, as always, Eric Pitcock. Hey, Wes. He is a preacher of the Gamaliel Church of Christ in Gamaliel, Kentucky. And friends, we hope and pray that for the next 30 minutes that you'll take out your Bible, paper, and pen and study with us about the subject which is at hand. That's because right. uh, today we are on lesson two of our four-part series in dealing with influences upon the church and how the outside is influencing the church itself. And uh, today, friends, what we're going to be discussing is the denominational influences that are influencing the church. Uh, you know, guys, we, there's just so many things that are out here in the denominational world that are influencing the church mm -hmm. for the worse. Right. Yes, and so, that's yeah. the thing in which we are well, talking about because we need to be able to see that the church itself is different Mm -hmm. right. than denominations. That's right. Because it is different. It is. If it, denominations, if it, wasn't, if it wasn't different, it wouldn't be uh, God's plan for salvation. That's you know? it. God did not ever start when He planned the church or before the beginning of the world when He planned the church that His manifold wisdom might be made known through the church. Mm -hmm. He did not plan out a scheme of divisions and devices mm -hmm. no, that sir. are out there today that are bombarding and being led by religious leaders, mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. named by religious leaders, mm -hmm. doing things that they ought not, mm -hmm. and doing things and superseding the Word of God with man-made doctrines, doctrines and creeds. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We understand that uh, the Bible is our sole standard and that's what we must live by. I think a good illustration that can be used right here is, if, let's say you have a house, you've mm -hmm. got the deed to the house. Mm -hmm. if, if somebody was able to come in, would they then have the right to come in and to change things even though you were the possessor of the deed, they weren't. Mm -hmm. Would they have the authority to change those things in your no, house? No, they, they wouldn't. By okay. law, they but wouldn't be able to. By law, they wouldn't. Yes. But see, that's exactly what denominations are doing. Mm -hmm. Right. They, have, they are naming themselves, well, listen, yes, we have changed our worship. Yes, we have added things. Yes, we've taken away things. And even though, you know, it cannot be proven by the <laughs> New Testament, that in which we do it as to be right in authority, we, we have persuaded ourselves into believing that's all right. So they're going in, they're changing the house of God into something which is man-made. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They're going through, they're changing the names. They're calling, themselves, calling themselves other things calling which themselves, God does not. Uh, calling themselves something that you can't read about exactly. in this book. I mean, you can't. So uh, why then, I want to ask this question, if, if they're doing the same thing as what we have just talked about in the illustration, they would not have the right to do, then why then are we allowing them to persuade our minds. Yeah, to influence us. To influence us mm -hmm. to do the thing in which we basically condemn. I think the, right. principle, I think the principle lies uh, with the example of Old Testament Israel when they looked mm -hmm. at the nations around about them and they, yeah. and they wanted to be like the nations around about them. You see, Old Testament Israel, as long as they was fighting against that stuff, they were okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. As long as they were fighting against uh, uh, those false gods, and as long as they were tearing that stuff down and instituting back something that God was approving, mm -hmm. as long as they were doing that, they were all right. And I'm here to tell you, whenever the church quits fighting against all this stuff, mm -hmm. right, and they quit fighting against it, right. and they get either moderate or they tone it down, and they mm -hmm. don't they don't take much of a stand, right. mm -hmm. and all that stuff begins to creep on in. Right. That's and, it. You uh, know, it, it, what we do we don't do is a lot of times the church doesn't do talking about the aspect of the church in view of this influence of the denominationalism mm -hmm. is we want to be friends. That's great to be friends with the denominationalism, but when they can't tell you apart from anybody that's in any of these that's denominations right. and you're not, and, and you know what, the, I think the culture, I mean the, the church itself has become so cozy and buddied up with the denomination mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. much, they become denominational in their mind. We, we are a distinct people. Right. That's we right. have a distinct message, That's separate right. and apart from denominational doctrines. But when we rub uh, and we, we allow 
uh, those people to be our our best friends and et cetera. And we can it's not that I'm saying we can't have, but but what they do is is they warp our minds and the view mm. that they have toward things and we lighten things up. You know, we can't some people say, Well you can't call out them. They're just gonna be saved in all churches. Yes. Well the only thing I read about in the New Testament is one church. That's right. And if you're not in it, you're not gonna be saved. That's right. Now, that's and simple a, Bible and teaching. To change that, basically you are right. changing the whole attribute of Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, they don't go, the denominational world don't go by a standard of authority mm -hmm. like the church what makes does. They feel good, what they right. want. And they the Bible still sword. says in Proverbs chapter 14, mm -hmm. uh, verses 12, in Proverbs chapter 16, in verse 25, for the. Uh, uh, there's a way that seems right unto man. There's a way that seems right unto mm -hmm. man, but, but the, the end thereof is the way of death. death. That's, right. That's right. And he that trusts in his own heart, in Proverbs. 28 and 26, he that trusts in his own heart uh, is a fool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the end thereof is worse than the beginning. And Jeremiah also, 10 and verse 23 absolutely. makes it the same thing. Oh it's Lord, not I know in. that it is not in man to direct his own steps. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for clarifying. Uh -huh. that. No problem. <laughs> Get me on that. But, but just think about this. These are some of the thoughts that we're about to go through. Some of the thoughts which the denominational people have uh, that's basically influencing the church, mm -hmm. and one of them being that they are depending upon the preacher right. to tell them what they must do. Right. Now that's exactly what the denominational people do. Right. Because if they actually got into their Bibles, they studied their Bibles, they would see that they were wrong. Mm -hmm. right. Well, so first, of, first of all, uh, Wes, uh, you know, people need, a, people need a teacher. Exactly. You know, according to 1 Corinthians chapter, mm -hmm. ten, uh, excuse me, Romans uh, chapter 10, mm -hmm. you know, how can they hear without a preacher? Mm -hmm. And so somebody's going to have to do the teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, but he clarifies that in verse number 17. Yeah, of that's, that. that's right. Uh, and that, that teaching is going to come from the Word of God. That's going to mm -hmm. build faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, the problem is, is that uh, people have place themselves in a complete and utter dependence upon right. somebody else to tell them mm -hmm. what they need to do and how right. they need to do it. Exactly. And, uh, and I believe this, this whole concept stems from this pastoral system and this pastoral concept that was right. handed down to That's the it. church That's by it. denominational people. Because right. denominations you see in the paper, pastor so-and-so, pastor so-and-so, right. pastor, not, people not even qualified to be a pastor even if they... You know, mm -hmm. they don't meet the requirements. Even if they were members of the church, they wouldn't be qualified. Mm -hmm. to be. Right. But nevertheless, you see this pastor system. What do they mean by pastor system? Well, it means that the pastor is the head, he's the ruler, and what he says goes. And, That's how, it. and he is the, the overseer of that flock. Mm -hmm. And uh, he dictates to them what they need to do and how they need to do and it. And they hang we, we need to make, upon every word mm -hmm. that comes out of his mouth. Uh -huh. We need to and make very, very plain right here, just real mm -hmm. quick that if somebody is so dependent upon somebody's teaching, uh -huh. mm -hmm. it's no longer their faith, mm -hmm. no. but the faith of that of the one who is actually teaching the person it. that's preaching, mm -hmm. uh, their faith is based upon what he's saying rather yeah. than the Word of God. They, how, build, how they build their faith upon another man's words. you got preacheritis, like 1 right. Corinthians chapter 1. Right, well, absolutely. How many, mm -hmm. how many times have you heard that in the Lord's church? Mm -hmm. Well, right. well, preacher so-and-so said, oh, I've heard that. And, and a lot you of people studied yourself into this. And a lot of people, if they stop at one congregation and a preacher tells them something they don't want to hear, they'll go down to the road to another congregation mm -hmm. until they hear mm -hmm. what they want to hear. Exactly. And I guarantee you, they'll find one that's going to tell them what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but the Bible still teaches there in Matthew chapter uh, eight and nine. You know that these people draw nigh to me with their lips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In vain do they worship me, but honor me with their lips with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they do worship me, mm -hmm. teaching as the doctrines and the commandments of men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so these people just hinge and hang and build their every bit of their faith upon the words that's proceeding out of somebody else's mouth. We mm -hmm. can't do that. And, and you can't do that. We have to build God. our faith upon what God's book teaches. Absolutely. And uh, we can't hinge upon uh, what saw, some man teaches us. God saw about the Bereans. Mm -hmm. They're in Acts 17, and verse noble. 11. These people were more noble, that they did not just take the word by, by uh, Paul. Mm -hmm. He did not just say, okay, well, just because it's Paul, I'm going to accept it. No. Mm -hmm. He said, these people are more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they, uh, they said they received the word with re all readiness mm -hmm. of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were that's so. Right. That's right. what they did. And that's, that's exactly right. what God wants. Uh -huh. He sees a person who not only takes the words of the preacher, 
He thinks about these things. He has a readiness in mind. He goes and searches it out in the scriptures. And if they correspond, God says this is a noble individual. Yeah. Right. That's the way they were in the Old Testament. You know, whether a prophet was true or false. You know, mm -hmm. they said, if you listen to a prophet mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. prophesies something, and it comes to pass, then you shall fear or respect or honor that prophet. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't come to pass, he's a false prophet, and he's mm -hmm. a false teacher, and you ought not listen to him. That's right. And so a lot of people are saying things that they ought not, and things that are not going to mm -hmm. come to pass, and things that you're not, they're, they're teaching you things that you're never going to be judged by. Mm -hmm. But we've got, to be, we've got to line our lives up with the Word of God, because that's what we're going to be judged by. You know, thinking, right thinking along these lines of the denominational influence, on the church, I think it hinges upon that due to their influence, it has broken down our distinctiveness mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. our distinctive things that we're supposed to be believing mm -hmm. and teaching according to what the New Testament teaches. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and their doctrines. Mm -hmm. and uh, They have influenced us like no other. Their doctrines has influenced us. And you, you could just about mark it down that if a denomination begins to embrace a doctrine or concept, in about 10 years, it'll filter into the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somewhere. And, somewhere. Mm -hmm. Somewhere. I, I mean, it'll filter in. I mean, it's just like, uh, you know, long ago, uh, the Baptist church did not use the instrument, nor did right. the Methodists. I mean, right. these people mm -hmm. didn't use the instrument. They understood God's truth on that subject. And so they did not use them. Uh, as a matter of fact, some of those, you know, famous uh, Baptist preachers, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. were quoted as saying, you know, this is something that's wrong. Well, they began to accept and embrace the instrument just as the Catholics did many years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, Charles Spurgeon. That's right. right. Uh, Charles a, Spurgeon a was, big, a, was big a big proponent against this against instrumental. That. That's right. Yeah. He even went up there to New York in his mm -hmm. time and actually got the church up, the Baptist church up there in New York City mm -hmm. to take it out. That's right. right. And so what we see is, is then it isn't very long then that you start having members of the church that Same. will embrace that. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the uh, uh, you have the the Christian Church mm -hmm. and the Churches of Christ that uh, had uh, somewhat of a, a disagreement, Big split. a split. In 1906. Uh, 1906, and the, the main part, or some of the one of the issues, was over the instrument. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, you know, so what they, what did they do? They began to embrace this, and it was all, I believe, as a d direct result of denominational influence mm -hmm. upon the church and they began right. to embrace a doctrine that was false right. and and this this we could go on down the line not only with instruments um, hand you know, clapping uh, you know we got hand clapping going on in the church today What's where did this hand clapping business come from it came it come from, from the denominations that's and it. that's where it come from right it, it. it was rooted and grounded in them and now all of a sudden what you got happening in the Lord's church today is you got all these people today out here hand clapping and this and that and what, what do brethren do? They try to justify themselves into, mm -hmm. into trying to twist Scripture and things of that sort to say, well, see, we can do this. Mm -hmm. right. It's not because that the Scripture says that you cannot. It's because they want to do That's it. That's right. And now this, this, this hand clapping business, I want to prove. I don't want anybody to think that we, I'm saying something and I can't prove my case mm -hmm. because we want to give a Bible verse on it. We mm -hmm. want to give the Bible on it. But uh, the Bible in uh, Ephesians 5, Colossians 3, it instructs us on how to sing. Right. Or to sing. Mm -hmm. And to sing only, right. not mm -hmm. with the addition mm -hmm. of mechanical instruments. Right. And mm -hmm. so that's the type of music we're to use. We're to use a cappella music. Right. Now, mm -hmm. whenever a, something is added to mm -hmm. that, Right. Like, for example, you could add a piano. Well, you've changed from acapella to instrumental. Mm -hmm. You could add a guitar. You've changed from acapella to instrumental. You could add whatever instrument you want to. Now, mm -hmm. when you start adding the hands and the feet and you start... Uh, you start stomping your feet and slapping your hands together, you mm -hmm. have added an instrument. Don't make right. a difference whether it's a, a drum or your hands, or right. you could whistle, or you could do whatever, make all kinds of things. The same type of mechanism right. for, That's right. for the use of a drum That's could right. be done with a hand. That's right. What have you done? You have mm -hmm. added, right. and you have changed mm -hmm. what God's law was, which right. was no instrument, a cappella, mm -hmm. and you, an instrument. You, you've changed it to an instrument. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. Hand clapping right. is wrong. That's That's it. Absolutely. What, what about it, this whole doctrine? Okay, I know the church condemns because it goes against Scripture, the whole once saved, always saved doctrine mm -hmm. that the denominations use out here. But I want to show you how the church itself has changed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, the, in, this, in this aspect. 
They say, no, no, once you're saved, you're not always saved. But, he's, but for some odd reason, the church has in the, their own mentality that once you're baptized, you're always saved. That's right. That's right. That, that's basically that's a, a, a major doctrine that the church has taken on because of the fact that after, uh, especially when there's no discipline, there's no, mm -hmm. it, there's no continual instruction uh, in the church that once we get them baptized, you'll ask somebody, well, mm -hmm. uh, how many people have, have uh, has been converted? Well, we baptized several. <laughs> well, where are they now? Well, I don't know. Uh, they, we baptize them and we left them. We're so them, quick know. to get them into the water. Yeah. And we think that them just being in the water, all of a sudden everything's all right. Mm -hmm. And then when a, a funeral is preached uh, 20, 30, 40 years down the road because they'd been baptized back so, mm -hmm. such and such many years ago, They're making it they, may, they, faithful, they may have huh? never darkened the doors of the church That's again, right. but that preacher will preach them into heaven. Yeah. That's it. And, That's you know, it. That, that is the same doctrine. Of Say, one saved, one always. saved no always, always say, that our Baptist friends teach. No right, uh, and we'll stand up against that. That's right. But we implement it, maybe not verbally. Mm -hmm. It's just like they said, their heart, their lip. They drew near to me their lips, mm -hmm. and with their mouths, but their hearts were far from that's it. Right. That's you know, it. We can draw near and say, "Yeah, we 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 we, we don't really believe this," mm -hmm. but that's what we're practicing. That's right. The, the same concept. Denominations right. in the same aspect of once saved, always saved. Once baptized, always saved. Uh, they they teach that only thing the person has to do is believe. Mm -hmm. And we condemn that all the way around it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for some odd reason, we say, oh, well, they need to be baptized. Well, they need to be baptized. They need to be baptized. Mm -hmm. That type of terminology is not in the Bible. One-steppers. Mm -hmm. One-steppers. We, we got some one-steppers going on. Mm -hmm. exactly. And they don't even have enough faith to be able to believe truly that Jesus is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And they've not repented from their sins mm -hmm. like they ought to, turn from them mm -hmm. and, and purpose in their heart that they're not going to go back to doing those mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and confess the Lord. When you confess the Lord as, you, as Christ, He's your master. Mm -hmm. And then you're a candidate then at that time mm -hmm. to be baptized or immersed to contact the blood of Christ. I believe right. this is, you know, I believe this concept is done uh, through many honest people that have right. uh, that are honestly trying to help somebody right. but do not recognize what it is that they are doing they they understand the great importance of being baptized for the remission of your sins and in you know because of the culture that we live in and because denominational influence says you don't have to be baptized, that's what we're always fighting against. We're always trying mm -hmm. to fight against whether or not you've got to be baptized or not. And that's true. We don't, yeah. we, 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 you have to be baptized. You have to, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and so sometimes in our attempt to be constantly defending that, it sometimes absolutely. appears as though, well, we're teaching all you've got to do is be baptized. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And, and, and I know that, and that's that wrong. I know this is not across the board. There's that's a lot right. of congregations that stand in front oh, yeah. uh, and, and teaching that was right. We... we uh, that's what we we want to do. We want to do things, uh, speak as the oracles that's of right. God, mm -hmm. do things by the authoritative word of God, according to Colossians 3 and verses 17. But we, just, we also want to understand that if we don't think the denominational influence is, is in the church, we're fools because of the fact it has. Uh -huh. And this is an area that it has. Not across the board, we wouldn't mm -hmm. say, but, well, but so in that, a lot of places that, it has. That's why we're doing these programs, right. is to enlighten the eyes mm -hmm. of those who are in the church that's so right. that they may look around and say, okay, is this going on where I'm at? Right, you know, absolutely. I'll give you an example. You know, I was, um, I was up at a tent, tent meeting with a good friend of mine up in Virginia, and uh, there, was, there was a big Baptist church there. And they were having vacation Bible school. Mm -hmm. And one of the activities that they had after this vacation Bible school was uh, basically like a, a mixed watering activities, you know, with water balloons and things like that, with, with all the young people mixed swimming and mixed bathing or mixed, mixed you know, with these right. water activities, mm -hmm. you know, in bikinis, mm -hmm. boys without their shirts on, mixing together. Now... Years ago, I know years ago that the Baptist church would have vilely opposed that. Yes. Mm -hmm. But now they've embraced, at least that one has embraced it. Not that all of them do, right. but at least that one has embraced it. Same thing we see with members of the church today. Right. We see that many brethren at one time would have vilely opposed certain activities. Mm -hmm. They would have opposed mixed swimming. Mm -hmm. They would have opposed, uh, man, I could, I could, I could you know, Recall sermons uh, of people that would preach against immodesty and things like that. People years ago used to oppose the prom. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. They used to oppose that stuff. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, uh, many denominational groups used to oppose the prom. Right. The Baptists and the Methodists and, and all these different groups many years ago were fighting against the prom because of its immorality and worldliness that took place there. Right. Well, mm -hmm. what happened was is the denomination let their guard down. The denominations began to, you know, kind of let that slip, not fight against that. Well, right. same thing happens right. in the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you got, uh, we're, we're losing our battle right. against this. And you got people actually uh, out there defending mm -hmm. that uh, immoral practice. Mm -hmm. and, and so we have to, in turn, you know, we have to, First of all, we have to open up the scriptures. That's right. And show mm -hmm. by the scriptures mm -hmm. that th that mm -hmm. is a violation against God's That's word. Right. And uh, but yes, you could go on and on and on. Well, th there's know. there's something that he already brought up uh, in dealing with how it's not until about like ten years later that something the trends of the denominations are actually bleeding into the church mm -hmm. somehow, some way. Well, I mean, what about these concerts mm -hmm. that the Brotherhood are are basically conducting? Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's that winter fest that's mm -hmm. over in, in Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg. Praise teams. Praise right. teams, things uh, of that sort. They're supposed that to be affiliated with the churches of Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So but they're these doing things, all these things and they're happened. all liberal. Yeah, all right. these things, what has happened is all these things have gradually over time crept in. Right. Well, see, I think uh, this is the reason why. Because people have turned their minds from trying to, trying to keep the doctrine mm -hmm. correct into trying to please the people to grow in the numbers. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it's like I said earlier, you know, we want, sometimes we get so close to the denominational world and to denominationalism mm -hmm. that we filter over there and we want to make some of them our brethren because they're good people and, and they are. They're, yeah, they're, absolutely. they're good, mm -hmm. honest, moral people in all religions. But, mm -hmm. but what we are, we're distinct mm -hmm. because of the fact that Christ is the one that shed His blood for mm -hmm. the church mm -hmm. of Christ mm -hmm. and that we must be different and separate. But what we do is the same thing with everything that happens in our society. We get dulled and we want to, I know a congregation not far from us, you know, they believe that there's uh, Methodist Christians, Baptist Christians, everybody's going the same way. They send out a bulletin. It has an ad or an advertisement for a Baptist uh, revival, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, you know, that ought not to be the case. Mm -hmm. That's where we rub up, where sometimes church members rub up and congregations rub up to the denominationalism so much that you can't see a distinctive line there mm -hmm. right. and they want to include one another. Mm -hmm. I, I've made very, very plain uh, in a lot of my lessons that if you cannot go and see the Lord's Church as something totally different mm -hmm. than a denomination, there is something seriously going on. Right. And uh, I mean, one of these other things that, that I was talking to an individual uh, just this past week and just asking them if they've ever uh, seen the children's church or mm -hmm. uh, children's power hour or mm -hmm. things of that sort in denominations um, in the past. And they said, well, no, I, I actually, I have not yet, I, I've never heard of it or seen it until the church was the one who first introduced it to us. Mm -hmm. And then the denomination started taking hold of it. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it be the influences coming in or the influences coming out, liberalism is going on rapid within our, in our brotherhood. Right. And even those who claim to be really faithful gospel preachers that are big names in the brotherhood. Mm -hmm. If you actually do a lot of their uh, history studies, you'll find that the whole children's church, basically defining it as this, Basically, during the worship hour on Sunday mornings, basically they take the little children and separate them mm -hmm. during the same hour of worship to have their own little class, to have their own teacher and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. Now, where in Scripture do they authorize that? Well, you know, unless there's something I'm misunderstanding about what's going on and, and uh, with that, uh, my, my position would be that uh, the congregation meets together Mm -hmm. and that uh, we, we stay together mm -hmm. and that, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that I would, uh, one of the things that I would want to be uh, asking would be uh, what, what, is, what is being done as far as these people that are overseeing that? That mm -hmm. would be my main question. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that are overseeing that, like, for example, the teachers that are teaching it, the people that are participating in it, because it's got to be adults to chaperone mm -hmm. it and, and to oversee mm -hmm. it, you know, 
And in my estimation, it, it seems as though they are forsaking the assembly uh, because they're not being well, able they to. Are. They're not being able to worship mm -hmm. with the re everybody else. That's right. it. And so that would be my concern with that. Like in Acts um, chapter two, in verse forty-two, mm -hmm. uh, the scripture is given here, and this is the very first century church, first established. In these uh, <laughs> these acts that are mentioned here, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in breaking of bread, and in prayers. Whenever you really do a study of that, that actually shows the five acts of worship in which Absolutely. they actually continued in. Mm -hmm. Now, we are commanded to come together on the first day of the week. That's right. Mm -hmm. Just as uh, first, uh, Acts chapter 20 and verse 7 talks about. But uh, back here in these Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 right here, that word fellowship mm -hmm. means that they came together being unified, coming as one. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what the whole heart of worship is all about, right. being one. So whenever you then, at that point in time, are going to try to take out the children out of, those, out of the worship service to move them out uh, to basically to have their own little class during the same type of worship, you are then dividing the worship service. Mm -hmm. And that itself, it only takes one thing uh, for, uh, for basically it to be uh, against God's Word for it to be wrong. Mm -hmm. And if you have authority for it, we want to see the authority right. for it. Mm -hmm. But when we all come together, what we're, what we're not saying is, we need to maybe clarify what we're not saying is, we're not mm -hmm. saying that we have no authority for uh, Bible classes for these children. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like we're we not talking Bible about classes, that. But we're talking about, I just want the, the viewers to be clarified that we're not talking about, we're talking about the worship. There's when a time come for together worship, worship and there's a, there's time, a time for Bible, Bible classes. Class. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Those are two distinct things. We don't want anybody to get the impression that we're talking about that you can't have Bible classes because you That's can't. Right. But when we come together right. to worship, when we gather together, mm -hmm. it's what the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. You know, we have that also in mm -hmm. uh, Corinthians, uh, First and Corinthians you know, chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. Know, right. One thing that I think that we all need to take in consideration in regards to anything that we want to try. You know, there's nothing wrong with trying to make things better. Mm -hmm. You right. know, I'm all about making things better. Mm -hmm. I'm all about making things easier and, and more mm -hmm. appealing to p individuals. But one passage we have to always keep in the tablets of our mind is, whatever you do, right. in, in word, word or right. in deed, right. do all by the authority of God Almighty. You've got That's to right. have His authority. You've right. got to have His approval. That's it. To do these That's things. That's the bottom line. That's on the bottom anything line. Anything in the religious That's realm. That's right. And we cannot right. allow uh, denominational influences to influence the church in a negative way. Uh, it's all right if they come up with a good idea uh, that will enable us to spread the gospel even further. Uh -huh. Then. And hey, it's authorized, and by, it's God's authorized by, by God's book. We'll take I have right it, in. and we'll take all the ideas you can give us. That's right. But we want to uh, push away those influences that are contrary to the will of God. God. That's Absolutely. it. Um, but there's there's some, just some real quick, some just other thoughts that are, that are bleeding into the church itself that good is all that matters. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches totally against that. Right. You can be Cornelius good all you want. was a good man. That's right. But he wasn't saved. He had to obey the God. One church is as good as another. Yeah. Ephesians all, 4, 4 tells me there's one I just body. One body. One That's body, it. And body's the church. That's, That's it. Right. All about love and Jesus. Right. Well, okay, I believe that, absolutely. but not to the extent of what they're saying. Well, mm -hmm. Jesus was the line. I mean, he was he the was lamb, lamb of God that took away the, the sins. Plus, he was a lion of the tribe of Judah. That's you right. have love and justice. You can, those are compatible That's in it. deity. That's right. Uh, loving the emotions rather than the soul. Mm -hmm. You see that rapid throughout the church. Mm -hmm. Nothing right. wrong with emotion. There's no wrong well, here, here's emotionalism. The you There's all a difference have emotion. between emotional and emotionalism. That's right. That's right. Because emotionalism doesn't have a standard. That's right. That's right. But we do need to be emotional about the things we do. That's right. But this is how I think the church is really being influenced by this, is that because the denominational world is out here being so uh, involved in emotionalism, the church has lost its emotion for it. Right. We've and ran the other way. We've ran the other way. Yeah. And, and whenever that's, that's denominations... A lot of times we have ran far in the wrong direction because of the stand that we've taken. And whenever denominations talk about specific topics a lot, the church gradually becomes silent on, on those matters. Mm -hmm. Guys, we, we, we hope and pray that you have taken this lesson that we've uh, presented before you today, that, that you have taken it to heart, that you'll evaluate the uh, the. the the current situation there at your congregation and see if this is really bleeding in. Mm -hmm. If it is, change. Absolutely. God wants you to change. Amen. 
And we love you so very much, and we want to help you any way we can. But until next time, may God bless. Just think about it.